Hello folks. Today I'm going to be welding up some sample pieces with this Harbor Freight Flux Core welder and then I'm going to be trying to break those welds. Now this isn't going to be a full review. There's already tons of information about this welder out there. Lots of reviews and videos. Uh, I'm sure most people are pretty familiar with it. Now there's a lot of debate about this welder in terms of what it's actually capable of. Uh, a lot of people do things with it that a lot of other people say, you well, know, you shouldn't do that with it. Um, it's going to fail. Um, the other side says, well, I've been doing it a long time and I never had one fail. So it's kind of easy to see both sides. But what I'm going to be doing is just welding up some things with it. I'll weld up some sample joints with 3 16 material, which is uh, within this machine's stated capability. And then I'll weld a few things which are kind of technically beyond what I think would be recommended for this machine, but that I know people do do with it. Uh, and then I'm just going to see what it takes to break those welds, or if I even can break them. I'll also be welding up duplicate joints with a much more powerful welder, just to get some kind of comparison for if we can break these welds, how much more difficult is it to break the welds uh, from a more powerful welder. Now the ground clamp that comes with this machine is pretty poor. Um, it's pretty chintzy, so I went ahead and replaced that just so I know that that's not um, you know, holding us back with this welder, or at least holding us back as little as possible. And I'm going to weld up a few sample pieces before kind of the main test pieces so I can get the settings dialed in and be sure that I'm getting as much as I can out of the welder. So I want to give this every opportunity that it can. But being a 120 volt input welder with AC output, there's definitely going to be some power limitations. So let's weld some things up and see how much those limitations are actually holding us back. And just so you know, the other welder that I'll be using for comparison is the ESOB EM215IC welder. Now I realize, not a fair comparison, that welder isn't a realistic alternative to this machine. It's far more expensive. Uh, so this really isn't meant to be a direct comparison of these welders per se. I'm not, you know, trying to criticize this welder by saying that, oh, it's not going to put out as strong of a weld as the, the ESOB, because obviously completely different class machine, completely different price ranges. Uh, I'm just using that welder because it's what I have, and it's just acting as a stand-in for the, you know, the more powerful welder to compare this to. So this video isn't meant to criticize this welder for being less powerful than one that costs eight times as much. Uh, it's just purely to see what kind of strength we can get out of the welds on this welder. And then I just wanted to have something else to compare it to. So I'll get things set up, get some test joints going, and we'll start trying to break some welds. All right, so here's the first two things I'm going to test. Uh, just a couple of weld-on pad eyes. Uh, on the left side is the one I welded up with the Harbor Freight welder, and on the right side is the one I welded up with my ESOB welder. For this testing, I just did a single pass all the way around with each welder. Um, if I was actually going to be using these, putting them into service for real, I probably would do uh, three passes uh, for each one, um, just to kind of get the uh, the weld size up to what kind of made sense for the thickness of the material and all that. But uh, but for the purposes of this test, just for simplicity, I did a single pass around each one. I did find that that Harbor Freight Flux Core welder does not like O35 wire. Uh, with 035 wire, I almost couldn't turn the wire feed speed down low enough. Um, and even with the wire feed speed set at like one or one and a half, um, I was still getting stubbing. I was getting, the arc was just like randomly going out and um, the weld was just, just terrible. I mean, it, it just really <laughs> would barely run at all with 035 wire in it. So I did switch out to 030 wire, which in all fairness is what it came with. Um, I just put um, you know, a bigger roll of 035 wire in it that I had, which is good wire. And um, I don't know if it's just the makeup of the wire, maybe that particular uh, brand that this welder doesn't like, or it could just, I think mostly it's just the fact that it was 035. Now these lifting eyes have a two ton working load rating. So initially I'm just going to take them up to two tons, make sure they hold. I, I kind of imagine both of them will hold up to two tons, but we'll see. And then we'll go right past two tons and we'll keep going up to the rated amount of that cylinder I have. I have kind of a rig set up to pull on these eyes and uh, I can put up to 12 tons on them. So I'm just going to keep cranking them up and see if they fail and at what pressure they fail, if they do fail and uh, what kind of the, the method of failure is. So I'll go ahead and get one set up in the rig and we'll see how it goes. All right. So I got the one in there that's welded up with the 240 volt ESOB. And I'm going to go ahead and start applying pressure slowly, and uh, we'll see how it does. Now we're up to about 2,000 pounds. All right, well, that's 4,000 pounds. It actually went down a little bit because the metal is starting to flex from the, the plate that it's welded to. But it's welded to 3 16 plate, so 
Uh, we'll keep going and see if we can get any more pressure out of it or if the whole thing just folds up and pulls through. Yeah. Well, we're just over 4,000 pounds, but it's just folding the metal and pulling through. And I did kind of expect that that could happen. And uh, if we can't get either one of them to fail, I'll straighten out that plate that they're welded to and weld on a strengthener beam on the back of it, and we'll try again. We're still at about 4,000 pounds and the whole thing is starting to come through. All right, at this point it's pretty obvious to get any more than 4,000 pounds, we're gonna have to straighten that plate it's welded to and strengthen it a little bit. Uh, but just to do a like for like comparison before I strengthen up the base plate, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling on the one weld with the Harbor Freight welder and uh, see if it fails the same way. All right, I'm not anywhere near 4,000 pounds, and again, the plate's bending, and uh, again, uh, as I get close to 4,000 pounds, the plate starts to bend, uh, but I'm just gonna keep going like we did with the other one and uh, see how it goes. And this one actually, I can't even get it to 4,000 pounds, much less over. And uh, as soon as I move the camera a little bit, you'll be able to see why. Now, before we take a look at that one closer, I will just show you what happened to the one that uh, was welded with the ESOB welder. You can see on the very edge, the weld did break. Uh, but what happened here is basically this right here was the initial tack where I tacked this to the piece. And then when I welded my beads down the end, both of them actually stopped just before they really tied in with this. So I never got a good hot pass all the way around. So this was a pretty cold spot and you can see the, the tack snapped and that caused the ends of these two welds to start to break. But even once those started to break, it still bent this almost at a 90 and didn't keep going further down the weld. And by contrast, you can see this one was actually just peeling the eye straight off of the, uh, the plate. Now I did start here and move this way, so it was colder here and the heat, as the heat built up, it kind of started to burn in a little better. Uh, and you can see that by the time I wrapped around the end, it was tying in a little better. So it would be interesting to see if this side would have peeled back as easily as this one did. But either way, that just goes to show just, you know, how little tie in you're actually, and you can see there's just little dots. Those little shiny spots were where the weld actually had to pull off of the base metal. So those little dots were the only places it was actually tied in. All right, so I got some pieces welded up. Uh, I already did bend a couple of them off camera. Uh, I'll go ahead and show that now. And then these two, I'm gonna bend in the other direction on camera. Starting with the one welded out with the ESOB welder, uh, you can see that the weld held up fine. There's no tearing at the toes of the welds. There's no cracking, there's no tearing, nothing's pulling free. And you can see that that did bend uh, very sharply and basically where the weld is hooked on it because it's not coming free at all it was forced to just bend at a really sharp angle and bend over so uh, the weld held up perfectly no no issues at all with that uh, in case it wasn't clear this is 3 16 thick material now the one welded up with the harbor freight welder you can see um, it didn't have nearly as sharp of a bend it was you can actually see the material is lifting uh, is lifting off of the base material so this this piece here is actually kind of lifting free um, on this side, it's not so much, uh, but on this side, it definitely is, and that's kind of limiting how much this really was bending at an angle. And the big reason for that, you can see, is that the metal was actually pulling free from the weld. And you can see not only was the metal pulling free, but the, this base metal was actually beginning to tear. So you can see there's almost a crack down there within the crack. So down in there, that crack is the metal itself just beginning to tear apart because when a crack starts, it, it's a lot easier for it to continue. So when this weld isn't attached very firmly to the base metal, it starts to tear free. But then because of that, it creates essentially a tear in the base metal 
and then the base metal itself begins to tear. And you can see here at the start, before the piece really heated up, um, it was a little bit warm from the two tacks, but it wasn't really heated up. You can see there, it really wasn't tying in very well at all, and so it was actually just popped free of the base metal completely. And then from here over where it was tied in a little better, uh, it was just beginning to, to peel off, and uh, the base metal was then starting to tear. And you can, again, you can see the crack down in there where the base metal was actually, where this piece was actually just beginning to tear apart. So it wasn't just an immediate complete failure. I mean, this piece didn't just snap straight off. Um, you know, there is some tie in there. It, it's not, you know, it's not the kind of thing where I would expect things just to fly apart right away. Um, but again, this is the kind of thing as to why somebody says, you know, you really shouldn't do that with that welder um, just because, you know, while you may never need as much strength as this, you know, as this uh, setup would provide, this one definitely is providing a lot less strength because just, just again, going back to this one, um, you know, it didn't, didn't come free at all. And the base metal was just, you know, just continuing to bend over and nothing was pulling three or pulling free. The weld wasn't coming apart or anything. So now on camera, I'm going to bend these the other way. So while, while I bent them this way the first time, this time I'm going to actually bend them this way. And so, you know, we'll be basically just trying to pinch this together. Now, no weld is nearly as strong in that direction. So, uh, you know, th this is definitely the direction where both of these welds are going to be less, you know, have less strength. So I do expect both of them to fail more than they did with the other one, with the other bend. But uh, this test will just kind of show uh, a lot better how much penetration we're getting down into the root and uh, how good a tie-in we're getting, you know, way down into the base of that weld. If we, when we pinch it this way, if it just, you know, tears free immediately, we'll be able to get a good idea of what's going on down in there. All right, let's see how this goes. The first one I'm going to bend is the one welded up with the 240 volt welder. Some of the flux falling off of the weld there. And as you can see in that direction, uh, the weld doesn't offer not nearly as much strength. So the piece just basically folded over, really only bent the, the base material a little bit. Uh, and honestly, I could probably stand to run this a little hotter because there's not a whole lot of penetration down into the root. You can see um, basically right along this edge here, it's still pretty sharp, um, just right down in the crack there. So um, it folded over, it's still, you know, there's still some strength there. I can't, I can't move it by hand. So the weld did start to fail, did start to crack. It's coming apart. Um, so it could definitely stand to have a little bit more penetration there. Could stand to be run hotter. Uh, but it just goes to show you that at least in this direction, uh, even with the 240 welder running, um, you know, to where at least it looked good from the outside, still not getting all that much penetration down into the base. And that's another reason why it's good to do testing. Uh, if I was going to be using this welder for a, a super critical project, uh, especially one where I couldn't weld both sides of a joint like this, um, I would probably want to turn that machine up a little bit. All right, now the joint welded with the Harbor Freight welder. Oh, and that, I think that already broke. In fact, I believe, yep, already broke. So. I was able to break it with my fingers, um, basically after bending it only that much. So while this one, I was able to fold completely in half and I still, I still can't even flex it by hand. You know, there's still enough strength left in that weld that I can't even flex this by hand. Um, this one, as you could see in the video, I bent it only about that far with the press and then I was able to just snap it off with my hands. And this is 3 16 material, which is supposedly within the range of this machine. And you know, that weld looked, you know, not the worst. And you know, if I had cleaned up 
you know, if I would have cleaned up that spatter with a wire wheel, um, you know, it wouldn't have looked like the worst weld ever or anything. So, you know, somebody could have, you know, run that bead down and thought, hey, that's not too bad. Uh, but just a little bit of lateral force on this thing and it, it just snapped immediately. So very little strength there at all. All right, I think that's pretty much going to do it for today. Uh, I do have a lot more ideas, so I think there'll probably be a part two to this video. Uh, I have a few different types of joint setups that I want to test also. Uh, I may do some cut and etching. Also, I want to test uh, multi-pass versions of these welds. Uh, when I folded this one over, it didn't fail, um, even with just the one pass. Although this one didn't get as much penetration down into the root as I'd like, so I may turn the welder up a little bit and uh, do another bend test like this one. And like I said, I'd like to do multiple passes with the Harbor Freight Welder and see if that makes any difference. Um, I know a lot of people, when they weld something up with this uh, Harbor Freight Welder, they'll just you know, do three or four passes just to kind of hopefully make up for the lack of strength. So I want to see how much difference it actually does make. Uh, also, I have some ideas in mind uh, to test with these. But like I said, I think that'll do it for, for this, which I guess is part one. Uh, like I said at the beginning, not super scientific. Um, hopefully it was still interesting or you know, maybe at least a little bit informative. Um, I know we didn't get these to outright fail, at least uh, not beyond this one starting to tear off when it uh, when the base material bent. Uh, but maybe in the next one we'll take this outside, get into a little bit uh, safer of an area, and go ahead and crank this up to the max and see if it'll tear off of there. Uh, but we'll see. Um, either way, I'll just I'll try some more things, see if we can get any more interesting results. But as it is, um, you know, maybe it held up better than you expected. Maybe it didn't hold hold up as good as you expected or maybe it's exactly what you expected. Either way, it was fun to do. Hopefully it was fun to see. And uh, like I said, I have some more ideas for the next one and uh, we'll see what we can do. As far as conclusions right now, um, really nothing too surprising. Uh, under ideal circumstances, that is just a straight inline pull away from the weld, which is when a weld is the strongest. Uh, it did hold up to uh, more, very well, a lot, quite a lot more than what the working load rating is for this pad I of two tons. Um, we got all the way up to six tons before I decided that it was getting a little sketchy for my garage. But again, you know that was a, essentially a static load. There was no shock or impact. Um, it was directly in line. There was no shifting back and forth or anything like that. To where, um, you know, if you were to bring that kind of thing into play. Um, you know, then maybe you'd see where this would start to crack and tear kind of like this one did. Um, and you know, maybe eventually you'd have a failure. Uh, but either way with this one and with the, uh, the pad eye that I welded on with the 240 welder, if I, I, like I said before, if I was actually going to put this into service, I would never leave it with just one pass anyways. Um, I would have done multiple passes, but I knew that, you know, something this large with a weld going all the way around it, uh, even with, you know, poor penetration was going to have quite a lot of strength. So that's why I didn't do the extra passes because I thought, well, I, I seriously doubt we would be able to get a failure with three passes on this thing, at least with the test rig I have set up here. Now, again, you go into the real world, you've got, you know, a shackle on this, you know, stuff is getting moved around. Um, you know, the weight is shifting back and forth a little, um, you know, and, and we don't even know yet how much, uh, the extra passes will even add to the strength. So, uh, that'll be interesting to see in the next part if uh, if these uh, bend tests hold up any better with uh, extra passes. And uh, maybe I'll even do some some shock loading on these. Maybe I'll clamp this up in a vise and hit you know hit each one with a hammer a little bit and you know see if we can get see a failure. So, but that'll be for the next part. So keep an eye out for the next one. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Take care.